Thank you, Acting Speaker, and it's a pleasure to rise and make a contribution on the Public Health and Wellbeing Amendment Bill. And I guess just to correct uh, the previous speaker there, no one is not wanting to extend the state of emergency uh, post the deadline that's been put in front of us. It is how we extend it. And I wish to put on the record why we oppose uh, this bill in its current form and support the amendments as moved by the member for Malvern. We do realise, uh, Acting Speaker, that we're not going to hit September 13 and go from stage four to zero in Melbourne. Uh, that is not going to happen. We are, we are clearly going to need uh, restrictions in place after that date. However, extending the state of emergency for six months is simply a bridge too far, and I will explain why. Parliament should be meeting on a month-by-month -month basis to discuss the detail around any extensions, including the ramifications of certain restrictions and how things could be altered and how things could be done better. On a number of occasions to date, we have already had restrictions put in place and then within hours, days, weeks, we've had backflips. The ability to visit partners was one. The ability to go fishing and boating was another. Golfing was another. We had a backflip on farmers markets, visits to maternity wards, and also changes to childcare, just to name a few. These are issues that can be scrutinised, debated and sorted out by the parliament sitting to get them right in the first place. MPs are made aware of these issues by their constituents, what the ramifications will be, what the impacts are, and we can relay that through a functioning parliament to get them right in the first place. Let me explain to you the situation we have in East Gippsland. Three years of drought, our summer tourist season decimated by fires, and then looking to the future with some hope, COVID hits and shuts down our business and tourism industry again. Two states of emergency we've had in East Gippsland, not one. So here we are with our business sector on its knees. Cases of COVID very, very low all the way through. The majority of our businesses looking to September 13 with a, with a, with a ring around that date on the calendar hoping to get up and running again. And now we read today that we're going to be closed beyond September 13. Quite rightly, there is outrage. And a number of business people in the region feel that they're being punished by the mistakes of others. Last time when we were in, co in, in stage two of the COVID restrictions, we, we saw no impact, cases didn't increase yet we were pushed back into stage three due to the actions of others. And the action that's at the top of that list is the quarantine fiasco, a complete disaster brought on by lack of oversight by this government, which is entirely responsible for the level of restriction that's been put on our communities and our business sector. And now we read, despite no increases in cases, that we're going to have to weather the storm beyond September 13. Now, this document that we've read in today's media is indeed an early draft, as members of the government have indicated. For goodness sake, change it before Sunday arrives to allow our business sector, particularly in rural and, in re and regional Victoria, to get back on its knees. Acting Speaker, there's a number of other areas that could benefit from the parliament meeting on a regular basis and discussing these matters. And I want to touch on one, and that's driver licence testing. At the present time, we can go to work in country areas and sit in our offices and, and go about our tasks. Yet for some peculiar reason, uh, someone who wants to sit their L-plate test can't go in and sit in front of a computer at Vic Roads because they've closed their doors to sit their L-plates. 
We can have two or three people travelling to work in a car in rural and regional Victoria, as long as they've got their face masks on, but we can't have two or three people sitting in a car for someone to do their pea plate test. Now, what we've had put in place to respond to that is a process where critical cases will, will be able to sit their licences. For country people, our young kids need, to be, need their licences to, one, attend a job, and two, even apply for a job. You need to be able to put on your resume, you have your licence or you're going for it. Sitting your L plates and doing your probationary test are activities that are allowed under stage three restrictions, but we've got it so wrong. We've just got it so wrong that we are outlawing this ability to happen. In relation to, oh, we're looking after those cases that are critical, we don't have trams going up the main streets of our country towns. We don't have buses linking every one of our country towns on a regular basis. To get your job, to apply for a job, we need our licences. All of those young people going for their licences should be treated as critical. The frustrating thing about this whole scenario is a lot of the mistakes that are made and a lot of the things that need to be corrected could be done very, very easily and very, very quickly by a functioning parliament. I do believe, Acting Speaker, that there is a great unawareness of the impact of some of these restrictions on our country communities. Have a look at the fiasco of farmers who are unable to cross the border to tend to their stock. The farmer who was told he had to fly his hay to Sydney and have it transported back from the airport rather than be able to take it over the border. Parliaments need to sit, parliaments need to meet to sort these issues out. Without regular sittings of parliament, without scrutiny of the restrictions that are coming into place, we will have more flaws and more errors than we need to have. At present, without Parliament sitting for the last 10 weeks, writing to a minister on an issue and then sitting back and waiting two to three months, if you're lucky, for a response is simply not acceptable. It is hopeless. Let's have a look at what other states are doing, Acting Speaker. Queensland has extended its powers until October 2 only. New South Wales, the ACT and the Northern Territory They've decided to revisit theirs every 90 days. South Australia renews theirs 28 days at a time. Western Australia has extended theirs only until September 3. Tasmania till August 31. But here we are in Victoria wanting to extend it well into 2021. Acting Speaker, there's a reason for these shorter time frames in other jurisdictions. And that is because, as has been well documented uh, by the Leader of the Opposition in his, in his contribution, the state of emergency powers provide very, very significant powers to the government of the day and bureaucrats over our lives. They should operate and need to operate under regular scrutiny, under regular checks and balances. Personally, I believe the South Australian model is perfect. They look and discuss these issues every 30 days. That is what the amendments moved by the member for Malvern have requested. And I urge all members of this chamber to support them so we don't have the amount of errors that we've had in the past. We don't have the amount of mistakes that are made. And that we understand the real issues on the ground that people raise with us through our electorate offices and ask us to come to Parliament to represent their views so that these mistakes are rectified, but preferably not even made in the first place because we have the appropriate scrutiny of the Parliament sitting. So, Acting Speaker, I conclude my contribution by saying to all members of the Chamber, don't just vote along party lines. Understand that regular scrutiny will be of benefit to the entire Victorian community, the entire Victorian population that's going through extraordinary hardship, 
and I encourage everybody to support the amendments moved by the member for Malvern.